Hi, I'm Tanya Arneson, Senior Pastor of Jackson First United Methodist Church, and this is Food for Thought for Friday, October the 9th. During our uh, sheltering, at, sheltering at home time, each month during the first week of the month, I presented uh, uh, some devotional from Joyce Rupp's book called Fresh Bread, and this is her posting for the month of October. I finally realize why I've grown to appreciate autumn so much. It is because the trees tell me so much about life, especially the inner seasons of life. Each year as I begin to notice that the leaves are going golden, I reflect that the trees seem to give themselves over to the letting go process much more freely than humans. Readily allow autumn to have their summer leaves. Trees allow the frost to touch them and the wind to toss them. They allow the season to make it appear that all is lost and that there is no green growth left. But they know better, for even at their most barren moment, when one can look among the branches and see scars and knot holes and leaves once hid, the leaves once hid. The trees already show terminal buds with the secret of next spring's leafing in them. We humans have a lot to learn from autumn trees. No one of us wants to be so surrendered, so vulnerable to winter as the October trees. Yet each of us, if we are truly open to growth and change, will experience this in our inner selves. Our relationships and our experiences of life will ask us to be open, to be willing to let go in order that new growth can come. New growth means change. Trees tell us this. Life tells us this. Jesus tells us this. One of the most beautiful aspects of the Incarnation is that the Son of God allowed himself to be vulnerable. He came as one of us and he opened himself up in love to the possibility of failure, being wounded, misunderstood, and rejected, all of those things that we know as daily dyings, like those autumn leaves fast falling from trees. Every time Jesus opened himself to others, every time he reached out or spoke up, every time he touched or received from others, he allowed himself to be vulnerable. Because of this vulnerability, people said, How can this man talk like this? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God? Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been granted him? Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders? What authority have you for acting like this? Jesus continued to be vulnerable even to death on the cross, because he knew that his life was a blessing to others. He grew ever more deeply in love with the Father, drawing strength and trust and courage from that relationship. It was his deep vulnerability that encouraged Jesus to pray, let your will be done, not mine, and into your hands I commit my spirit. It was this surrender that led to death and then to the tremendous new growth of resurrection. It is the faith moment that has given courage for change to all autumn hearts ever since. C.S. Lewis understands well this vulnerability of Jesus when he writes, To love at all is to be vulnerable. Lewis cautions that the only way of being sure we will not be hurt or wounded is to give our heart to no one and never to be vulnerable. If we do this, then we lock our heart in a tomb of selfishness where it eventually becomes unbreakable, unpenetrable, irredeemable. He encourages us to look to Jesus and to draw near to God, not by trying to avoid the sufferings inherent in all loves, but by accepting them and offering them to him throwing away all defensive arm, armor. Jesus referred to throwing away all defensive armor when he said, 
Only if you lose your life for my sake will you find it. Jesus was talking about the autumns in our lives, those moments of vulnerability when we are asked to shed our armor, to risk relationships, when we open ourselves to try something new so that more of our giftedness can be shared, when we walk the extra mile or turn the other cheek to forgive 70 times 7. I'm going to share the remainder of this chapter with you next Friday. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we continue our sermon series on the book of Nehemiah. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be talking about what happens to our dreams when we put God in the mix of things. I hope you'll be with us either in person or by live stream at 1030 this Sunday. As you reflect upon the autumns of your life, I would enc encourage you to reflect on the moments of your life when you were vulnerable. Choose one moment that is especially significant. What happened? How did you feel? What did you think? Was there growth in this experience? And what does it tell you about your life? I look forward to seeing you again next week as we continue to hear about the autumn times of our life. In the meantime, be blessed and be well and know you are beloved. Amen.